This is the uh, wall in Bethlehem um, adjoining the, the Ida refugee camp, another refugee camp. Um, the Ida camp is surrounded by the wall on three sides. <coughs> This is uh, painting on the wall, and you can see uh, trash dumped from the Israeli side onto the Palestinian side. More painting on the wall. <clears throat> and this is um, the wall. You see it here, starting in the left bottom corner. And you can also see it back here. This is all the wall inside the city of Bethlehem. Oops. Weaving around here and then going up the street here. That's a house across the street from the wall that was commandeered by the uh, Israeli forces for security. This is a mosque um, behind uh, the barbed wire along the wall. That is uh, artwork on the wall. This is the city of Hebron, where we uh, visited, and it's um, Shuhada Street. Uh, this is the checkpoint. You'll, you'll notice that it's essentially built sort of like a trailer, and it, it takes up the entire street, which means that there is no way any vehicular traffic can get through ever. The only way to get through is uh, on foot, and these are school children who are waiting to go home to school uh, through the checkpoint. Uh, this checkpoint has effectively sealed one of the most important entrances into Hebron uh, for Palestinians. The Israelis who live in the settlements outside of Hebron, um, there's one notorious ideological settlement outside of Hebron called uh, Kiryat Arba. They have settler only roads and they can get anywhere they want to, but the Palestinians uh, have difficulty uh, getting into the town uh, because the checkpoint does not permit ve ve vehicle traffic, which means that when someone has a heart attack or needs to deliver a baby, that person has to be carried by other people down the hill and through the checkpoint. This is a view of the old city of Hebron. Uh, which is crumbling. This is an historic old city that is crumbling behind Israeli barbed wire. This is a street that was not blockaded, so we were able to walk through it. Um, it's, under cons it's under reconstruction with a grant from the European Union. That's what all the uh, workers are busy doing. And you'll notice that there is this mesh across the top. This is because Hebron is the one place outside Jerusalem where Israelis live um, in the same place as Palestinians. There are Israelis who are living <clears throat> in these apartments above the shops. And that's an old Palestinian home that is barricaded. Here's a close-up of that mesh that I showed you. It was installed because the Israelis living in these apartments above the street were throwing things like heavy cinder blocks down on passing pedestrians to kill them. That's what life is like in the West Bank for the Palestinians. This is a... Um, a home in a small settlement that was uh, created by Jordan and given as a gift to some uh, about 20 Palestinian families who were who were driven from their homes in West Jerusalem, and this is just inside East Jerusalem. Um, and it is being this this settlement, which belongs to the Palestinians, is being settled by Israeli settlers. And this particular home has actually been divided in half, and half of this Palestinian family's home is occupied by Israeli settlers. So this Palestinian family has been forced 
to pay taxes for the use of their own home by an Israeli family. While we, right after we left, um, the uh, family was evicted after more than 20 years of legal battle uh, about their right <coughs> to their home, which included a full-time, 24-7 presence on their porch by uh, representatives of the International Solidarity Movement who, who simply were there for the purpose of being witness to what happened because the family knew that if they ever left their house, all of them, with no witnesses, that someone would come in and plant property there and then accuse them of theft and then have them evicted. But they were evicted anyway. And the father then promptly had a heart attack and died. And this is the war of words that existed before they were evicted right outside their front door. That's their sign. And then you see the efforts of the settlers to continue this psychological war. This is the view down from a very large settlement um, called Ma'ali Azumim. Um, this water over here is a recreational lake that is being man-made that is being dug, that uh, taps into Palestinian aquifers for the purpose of creating pools on their land for the Israeli settlers. And these are Israeli-only roads. That is settler-only roads. <coughs> all, all the roads around the settlement. That's a an Israeli police station right outside the settlement with another Settler on the road. And that's a close up of the uh, artificial lake that's being done. This was the hotel where we stayed in Nautilus, uh, complete with a bullet hole in the, uh, in the um, decorative window of the hotel. This is a town called Al Aqaba uh, in, a, in the Jordan Valley. It's a town of, a tiny town of no more than about 300 people. And um, this is its mayor. Um, he's in a wheelchair because of the age of 17. He was shot by Israeli soldiers as they were practicing outside in his neighborhood. Practicing their, their aim, I guess. And uh, <clears throat> he is sitting in a new school that was just built for the children of the town. The school is slated for demolition because it was built without a building permit. The mosque is slated for demolition because it was built without a building permit. There is a home that is a pre-1967 structure in this town. It is not slated for demolition because it was built before 1967. Another such home. Every single home in this town that was built after 1967 is slated for demolition. 